How aerodynamic was the 2013 Subaru BRZ? A bunch of you amigos have requested this, so let's find out. And in addition to this, we also tested how the BRZ performed with an air ramp to increase its downforce. We'll cover that at the end of this video. To begin with, the flow looks pretty decent because much of the flow hitting it isn't accelerating, but it actually flows over the front edge very nicely. There is no separation, which is because of the gentle rounding of the hood. Underneath is pretty good too. The front lip is okay because the flow accelerates underneath the car, and that should reduce the pressure and hence increase the downforce. However, the streamlines bend very sharply because of how flat the underside of the lip is, and there seems to be a little bit of flow separation, but let's move to the pressure plot to get more information about that. And yep, the pressure definitely is indicating some amount of separation. There is low pressure at the underside of the lip, but just look at how localized it is. That is a very strong giveaway that the flow quickly separates and then reattaches. Over the hood of the car, there is low pressure too, and that unfortunately comes from the hood being curved so much. So while that feature is really good for reducing drag, it comes at the expense of producing lift here, which isn't good for stability. A way that Subaru could have reduced the lift here would be by pinching the front more, so that the hood wouldn't need to be so rounded to accommodate all that flow being redirected. Moving to the front windshield, things aren't that great because we can see a large recirculation zone between the hood and the windshield. That increases the drag of the car. However, fortunately, this zone doesn't affect the flow over the rest of the windshield because we see how the flow travels nicely over it without separating. But the damage is already done because we see this very high pressure zone over about two thirds of the windshield. That is actually great for downforce, but bad for drag. And this was the exact same problem we saw with the Audi TT last week. To get rid of this problem, the easiest thing to do would be to reduce the angle between the hood and the window so that there is a smoother transition. Let's move on to the roof now. That is where things get a little bit dodgy. So as a positive, the flow stays attached very nicely, and that is because the intersection between the windshield and the roof is rounded nicely. That is good for drag. On the other hand, because the roof pops up so much and is very rounded, the flow accelerates a lot. That comes with a massive low pressure zone over the driver's head and produces a lot of lift, which makes this car unstable at high speeds. This problem mainly comes about because the BRZ is quite short. As such, the roof has to pop up so sharply to accommodate the people inside. If it were longer, you could more gradually build up to the same height, but not get the same low pressure. Over the rear window, we get a thick boundary layer forming, and that is thick with a double C. That's not that bad for the BRZ, because while a lot of other cars would suffer severely, the BRZ doesn't have anything downstream of this region to be impacted by it. The boot is very simple, aerodynamically speaking, there is no rear wing, so the effects of the large boundary layer is minimal here. Perhaps the only negative is that the wake is a little larger, which adds a few counts of drag there. But whenever you see the boundary layer growing so quickly over the rear window like this, you know that it is seeing a massive adverse pressure gradient. As such, that tells you that this region is acting like a wing. Wings produce lift and lift is bad. And looking at the pressure, that is exactly what is happening. There is all this really low pressure over the rear window and almost to the trunk. So the entire cabin for the people is producing lift. Given that this is a sports car, that isn't great. However, at this stage of the car, its design is very restricted because the front of the car greatly dictates what you can do at the back. Perhaps the only real option is to make the rear window flatter, which would then increase the size of the back of the car. Then running a more aggressive diffuser to kick up the flow and reduce the wake size would do the job. It would then look a little bit more like a Nissan GTR at the back. As for the underbody, we get pretty good flow. It remains largely attached and we can see that under the front wheels, there is massive flow acceleration. See how red it is? That results in low pressure here, which helps not only increase the downforce on the car, but also helps balance the car. The diffuser is okay, not great, you can see by the wake that it doesn't really throw the air up too much, which tells us that it isn't producing that much downforce, and the pressure confirms that it isn't producing that much either. Looking at the vortices, the shortness of the BRZ becomes an issue here because we can see large A pillar and C pillar vortices. Those come about because these pillars are too upright for the flow it is seeing, and they are upright because the cabin is squished because the car is so short. The jetting vortices from the contact patches of the tires are huge, as you might expect, then the rear produces quite a few smaller vortices at the edges. That is because the rear has been highly stylized, so the flow breaks away at many different places. In terms of the drag, the BRZ is pretty good. There are just the usual suspects of the wheels and the rear, but one region that could be improved is the side mirrors. The drag isn't as bad here as the Subaru WRX, for example, but it's still pretty bad, and there are many supercars which are styled much more aggressively that don't have so much drag here. On a good point, because the weight dies out so quickly downstream, the drag is lower. Hot dog. We have a new liter coming in at 0.29. The lift comes in at a whopping 8.9 kilos, which is quite a bit at such a low speed. 
The silver lining is that the BRZ doesn't go that fast. And looking at this 8.9 kilos, we wondered if you could easily drop that number. We put a little air ramp underneath. You can see how the underbody bulges out a little near the front. The idea behind this is that it should increase the downforce at the front. Let's see how it did. At the very front of the underbody, initially, the air ramp reduces the velocity here, and that may seem like a really bad thing. But what is happening is that under the air ramp, the velocity is now accelerating. And in fact, the air ramp has made the front less flat. That eliminates the minor flow separation point here, which at the very least is good for drag. Looking at the pressure, as expected, we lose that really localized low pressure at the front, but in return, we get low pressure over a much larger region underneath the air ramp. In addition to that, fortunately, the flow acceleration around the front wheels isn't affected by this air ramp too much, so we don't lose out there. And finally, the rest of the underbody and the wake isn't really affected, so that is great that the air ramp has a very localized effect. The air ramp doesn't produce any vortices either, which is good for vortex drag, and it doesn't produce any other drag either, but how did it affect the downforce, the whole reason why we made this air ramp? The BRZ still produces lift, but it has dropped 3.2 kilos and is now only producing 5.7 kilos. So that means in order to drive home safely, you don't necessarily need to gorge yourself every time you go out. And things are even better because in addition to this drop in lift, the air ramp drops the drag coefficient by about 10 counts as well to 0.28. That drop is largely because now the front lip separation has been nullified. So this air ramp was an all-round improvement. High five. Peace out amigos.